Well, gradually the visits from Marcus became more frequent. Well, not at the beginning, every week by any means. It was more like once every two or three weeks. Well, it depended a lot on his other commitments and he did seem a very busy person. <laughs> In fact, that was one of the reasons for his more frequent visits. I began to do some secretarial work for him. Nothing important, really. Certainly nothing he shouldn't have been able to have done in his chambers. <laughs> I think we both realised it was just an excuse to call with me, but neither of us pretended we thought this, and things just developed from there. He would give me a ring and say, if you have that statement proofed, I could call over this evening and pick it up. 7.30, all right. Fancy a spot of dinner. <laughs> I never said no. In fact, I always look forward to his calling. He, he was so dashing and, and so considerate. A really good friend. <laughs> it must have been after about six months. No, maybe less. Uh, when, when we arrived home after a, a wonderful meal at the Hermitage and two bottles of delicious Merlot. <laughs> Marcus came in for coffee, as usual. He was taking the next day of work, he said, working from home, so he was in no hurry. He was so complimentary about how I looked and, and what I was wearing. Do you know, Mills, he said. No one else had ever shortened my name like that before. Do you know, Mills? You want to wear red more often. I've never seen you look so attractive. Yes, red is indisputably your colour. Damned alone, if I may say so. And then he got up to go. I'll see myself out, he said. Gave me a peck on the cheek and, and the front door closed behind him. Well, actually, being totally truthful, well, it wasn't exactly a peck on the cheek he gave me. With all that murmur, it might well have been my fault, but well, I didn't manage to turn my cheek. It, it was my left, my left cheek quickly towards him. And by mistake, it was more my lips he kissed. Well, quite accidentally, of course. Full on the lips. Well, less than a minute later, he knocked on the door and, and I opened it. <laughs> You'll not believe it. Front tyre as flat as a proverbial pancake. Have you got a garage number? At quarter to midnight, Marcus, I said. <laughs> and that's how he came to spend the night in the guest room. Actually, and being totally truthful, it wasn't exactly in the guest bedroom he spent the night. Well, he did start helping me make the bed in there, that's true, but uh, maybe with all that Merlot. <laughs> anyway, I moved round to his side of the bed to straighten the balance, and when suddenly his hand was on my shoulder, and well, very quietly, in almost a whisper, really, I suppose you could certainly say very um, sotto voce, he said in my ear, my, my right ear it was, Irresistible in red mills. It's the red cape that makes the ball lose control. That long zip must slip down so easily, mills. And it did. <laughs> <laughs>